Hello and welcome back to the Legend of Heroes, Trails of Cold Steel. Last episode, we... By the way, did you happen to run into Sharon on your way out? She saw me leaving, but she just let me go. Hmm. Even the best maids aren't that all-knowing. Well, as I was saying, um, we... Last episode, we... Um, roamed around Elisa's house, uh, talked to her, and, um, we... Consul... Uh, Helped console her because of uh, some issues she was having, and um, then we got a call from Captain Claire to go meet up with her. So we're going to do that after the this hidden quest that starts right here. Toddy, where are you? I gave up. You can come out. Why's a kid out this way? Yeah, I'm a bit concerned myself. Maybe we should try talking to him. Is something wrong? Who, who are you? Don't worry, we're good guys. But being out this way on your own could be dangerous. Shouldn't you be back at home with your family? Well, I want to go home, but Tati said he really wanted to play hide and seek. Hide and seek? This way tonight. Yeah, we were playing earlier too. When I accidentally found him, he got really annoyed about it. Maybe it's because I usually can't find him at all and have to give up. But anyway, he ran off saying that there was no way I'd find him this time. No holds barred hide and seek. Sounds kind of fun. How fun it is, is, isn't the issue here. Both of your families know where you are, right? Yeah, we're next door neighbors, so we were told it was okay as long as we didn't go too far from home. I think Toddy's gone and hid himself pretty far away this time, though. That could be a problem. Yeah, maybe we should start seeking. Are, are you sure? Of course. You want to find him as soon as possible, too, right? And besides, I doubt he's having a lot of fun being hidden away on his own this way tonight. Th thank you. Okay then, any idea where he hid himself? Well, he wouldn't have hidden indoors, that's against the rules. And I've searched all the hiding places he's ever used before, but I can't find him anywhere. I hope he hasn't got himself stuck anywhere hard to get to. Sounds like he really didn't want to be found, so he probably somewhere he wouldn't normally hide. Maybe the upper level. Yeah, that makes sense. Alright, let's see if we can find anywhere on the upper level that a child might try and hide. Thank you for helping. Good luck. All right, I know exactly where he is. Head this way. Wow, this city's got a nice feel at night. Yeah, it's really pretty. He's right down here. I think I sent someone nearby. Really? Yeah, now that you mention it, I can too. Think it's the kid we're looking for? Probably. Let's take a look. Yeah, he's right down here in the crate. This wooden box is pretty suspicious. No kidding, and I can sense someone inside. The boy we're looking for is named Todd, right? Todd, if you're in there, let us know. You've been surrounded. There's nowhere to run. What the? Huh? Who are you guys? Got him. Look most sense to come and look for you. I can't believe he seriously got adults to help him. That's cheating. Well, to be fair, it was our suggestion. He was pretty worried about you, though, since it's getting so late. What were you do going to do if he never found you? You don't seem to want to be found, so I doubt you could have would have come out on your own. Well, you might want to set up a time limit next time you do this. Fine, fine, I'll go home. I'm amazed you managed to find me in that box, though. We can't all be masters of stealth. Hiding in a box is a bit cliche, too. People do it all the time on sneaky missions. Wow, you're so cool. I want to go on a sneaky mission too. Can you not give him innocent little children strange ideas? No, please do. That's funny. Thank you so much for helping me find Toddy. What a relief. I found a great hiding spot too. And stop calling me Toddy already. Oh, why? You're always going to be Toddy to me. At least nobody ended up lost or hurt. It's really late now, though, so both of you need to head along home. All right? What? We've barely gotten started. Now Okomo needs to hide. W what? I think we need to stop for tonight and go home. You're going home. Losers have to do what winners say, right? Ah, <laughs> oh, fine. I'm going. I'm going. Good boy. Take care, both of you. Later. 
Wait for me, Toddy. Thank you so much for finding him for me. They're not much, but you can have these pretty stones as a thank you. Thanks. Come on, what's taking you so long? Hurry up or I'm going to leave you behind. I'm coming. Will that take care of that? But I never would have expected you to be so good with kids. I suppose. You find kids that age on the battlefield too. That's... Hmm? Oh, it's nothing. Anyway, we end up getting sidetracked, but I think it's about time we head to the bar to meet Captain Claire. Fine by me. There we go. There's that hidden quest done. So now all we have to do for the rest of the day is go and talk to Captain Claire. Which is this way? This is where Claire said to meet her, right? Yeah, this looks like the place. Well, it looks like this is the place. Are we done looking around? After we meet with the captain, we probably won't have any more time to look around tonight. Anything else we do, we'll do in the morning. Excuse me. It's got great music. This sounds like Persona 5 music. All right. Now to find Captain Claire. Or just something you find in Persona. Oh. Wow. She's in like some nice snazzy dress. Yep. She really did get dressed up for this. I guess it makes sense that she wouldn't come here in uniform. The charms of an older woman, eh? I think I'll manage. Sorry I kept you waiting. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Oh. Hi. Yeah, I kind of ran into her on the way here and told her she could come along. That's not a problem, is it? Not at all. I assume you've been surveying the town while acting as Rain's bodyguard. Sounds like you've done your homework. The intelligence division has told me a little. Anyway, I think we might attract a little too much attention if we stay at the counter. What do you say we get a table for three? It's good to see you both. I think this may be the first time we've been able to have a proper conversation. You may be right. She looks really good in the outfit, in the, in her dress though, and in her uniform. I was hoping I'd get the chance to sit down and talk with you too, actually. Oh? You sure you don't want me to go? <laughs> That's not what I mean. I have a lot of questions. Like, about why Milliam transferred into our class, for example. Sorry about that, I took a drink of some water. But there's one really fundamental question that would go a long way toward answering a lot of the others. What exactly is it that you and Chancellor Osborne are trying to accomplish? Let's look at that standoff with the Provincial Army earlier this evening. It's hard for me to feel much sympathy for them after they drove armored cars right into the middle of the city. But maintaining order in the provinces is generally accepted to be the duty of the provincial armies. Maybe it's just me, but it seemed an awful lot like you were just trying to provoke them by belittling their authority. It did look like your people were picking a fight. Viewed without the proper context, I can see how it might look like that. But right now, the factional conflict in the Empire is nearly at its breaking point. Crossbell is buzzing with talk of independence, and Calvert is still weathering its immigration disputes. In such volatile times, there's a very real need to create a far more expansive network to help maintain public order. The only organizations that are up to the challenge are the Railway Military Police and the Intelligence Division. That may be the case. Still, your boss is the one making those conflicts worse. I can't deny that. But at the very least, the Chancellor is acting with a sense of integrity. He hasn't stooped so low as to give aid to terrorists, unlike some others I could name. I want you to at least understand that. Wait, so... Wow, she really said it. So the noble faction's been the one backing the terrorists, huh? I'm afraid there's no longer any doubting it. 
We've all but confirmed the involvement of Duke Cayenne, the most prominent representative of the four great houses. The three airships the Imperial Liberation Front have been using have been traced back to Ordis as well. I'd wondered how they got their hands on those. I've heard the Duke is just a gaudy old man, but... Eustace's brother came to pick him up in Legram, didn't he? That's what Toval told us. And now, Rufus just so happens to pop up on another of his secret trips. Captain Clare, what's going on in Ruhr? And how are Elisa's family and the Reinford Company involved? I guess it's time to get to the matter I called you here for in the first place. The Railway Military Police is currently weighing the possibility of a forced inspection of Reinford's first factory. Sounds serious. The first factory belongs to one of Reinford's major divisions, right? Correct. It's one of the main divisions and handles the bulk of the company's iron and steel processing, among other things. That explains, so those weren't terrorists that were there at the mine, it was literally the RMP because of this situation. They're also currently under suspicion of something I'm not at liberty to discuss with you right now. The two of you are aware that project management at Reinford is split up across several major branches, right? It is? And on top of that, she's got her hands in the development of our Arcus units, too. It's way too much work for one person. How many projects does Mother have under her wing right now? Well, I'm afraid I can't give a simple answer to that. But suffice to say, the Chairman only knows about a small number of the projects in development by the Reinford Group. Lately, the Directors have... Come to think of it, I overheard Elisa and Sharon talking about something like that. For years now, Reinford has been the Empire's heavyweight when it comes to heavy industry and manufacturing. The company is split into different divisions that handle things like steel production, railways, weaponry, and tools. The problem is that those divisions have simply become too large. Large enough to have their own internal allegiances. Some to the nobles, with others supporting the reformist faction. Uh, are you serious? So even companies are taking sides. I'm sure Arena Reinford is aware of this to at least some extent as the company's chairman, but the self-supporting accounting system she introduced has the side effect of granting each division a long leash. Because of that, I doubt even she has a full grasp of the situation. So, the first factory you guys have your sights set on for that inspection is aligned with the noble faction, I assume. You assume correctly. And the Provincial Army is doing everything it can to stop us from carrying out that investigation. That's what led to this evening's quarrel. I imagine Chairman Arena is currently doing her utmost to rein in all the divisions and get them back in line. The thing is, when she seized control of the company five years ago, she had to rely on support from both sides. Being indebted to them like that, I have my doubts she'll be able to target the underlying problem. It's sounding shadier by the minute. You can say that again. The situation seems even more dire than I thought. And while all this is going on, the factional conflict keeps burning hot across the rest of the Empire. I've told you as much as I can right now. Tensions are mounting all over the country, but Ruhr has an extra fuse of its own. Try to gain an understanding of the crisis unfolding here. Then do your best to stay out of it. Whatever other lessons Class 7 takes away from this field study, I hope that ends up on the list. <laughs> I wish you the best with the remainder of your field study. This is definitely feels like it's setting up for the, for the second the game. Please the bill sent to the Railway Military Police Branch Office in Ruhr Station. Certainly. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Wait! The bill! Looks like she just picked up our tab. She gave us some good intel, too. For free, even. <sighs> and I can't just go running after her now. Looks like we owe her one. So, you like the mature type, huh? She's sorta like Sarah. Except responsible and composed. You can say that again. Oh. Must be yours. Hello? Reen Schwarzer speak. Reen, what are you doing? Uh oh. Oh, it's just you, Elisa. Well, what do you mean it's just you? 
Is it true some girl invited you out for a night on the town? Whoa, hold on. A late night date? I thought you only had eyes for me, <laughs> Reen. <laughs> I love Crow. Anyway, good job, kiddo. You better spill all the details later, huh? He'll do no such thing. Now, now, I'm sure there's nothing to worry about. V was with him, too. Still, it was rash of you to go out on your own without at least consulting us. Ready to head back? Yeah, I think that'd be for the best. Elliot told on us. Ooh, you're moving up in the world. <laughs> I've got a little reward here for you. Or a jacket as a perk. Drinks are on me someday. Meanwhile, north of Rewer City. Oh no. Bad guy music. so hard they'll be picking up the pieces for weeks you heard the boss man tomorrow's a red letter day for us a real do or die moment in every sense of the word all our preparations will be rewarded soon when we sweep in and take the chancellor's head keep your eyes on the prize and give it all you've got yeah Talking about murdering people, then the ding 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 of the music. All right, day two of the field study. Nine twenty-six Sunday. Mm. Uh. So tired. The air here is so fresh, especially for a city with this many factories. It must be because we're up in the mountains. I'll say. Compared to the capital, the air quality is pristine. <laughs> well, the capital does have a few hundred thousand more people living there. Uh, <coughs> uh sure is a nice day today, isn't it, Elisa? <laughs> Not as nice as last night must have been. <sighs> I told you, I I'm sorry. Yeah, I'll bet you are. I cannot believe you! After all those things you said to me last night, you go rushing out to meet another girl! <laughs> Ooh, the skies might be clear, but I'm sensing a stormy forecast today. Well, all things considered, even if we assume Captain Claire is trustworthy, I'm not sure how wise it was to go out on your own. I know, I know. In hindsight, I regret keeping it to myself. Still, it was pretty bold of Captain Claire to show up alone to meet Reen. Even dressed down, I wouldn't have thought she'd go out alone with the Provincial Army on patrol. I'm guessing she's more than strong enough to handle herself. Not sure what her weapon of choice is, though. Ah, I wish I could have seen her all dolled up, though. But she was a real knockout. She was. Come on, that would put a spring in any man's step. I don't blame you for sneaking out alone. Oh! <laughs> no! It's not like I knew she was going to show up wearing a cocktail dress. I swear. You seemed pretty taken by her when she showed up yesterday, though. And your eyes were glued to her right up until she left the scene. Oh, really? So while we were enjoying a quiet evening, you were out carousing with a beautiful woman, were you? You lucky son of I mean for <laughs> shame, Reen. We are here representing the Academy on a field study. I swear, you guys are just making things up at this point. But thanks to the information I got from her, we have a pretty good idea what's going on here in Ruhr. And now that we know, we should be able to do something about it. What do you think, Elisa? Yeah, I'm in. So in short, the first factory did something to catch the eye of the railway military police, prompting an inspection. And all the while, the provincial army has been here blatantly trying to prevent them from doing that? 
Let's not forget that the first factory is run by none other than the Noble Faction. I know that the Divisional Directors have been operating without much in the way of executive oversight for years now. But Mother always allowed it. She thought that encouraging competition among the Divisions would yield more innovations. I never thought that'd lead to something like this. Seems like the lesser of two evils. By the way, hearing about the first factory made me curious. Do the other divisions have their own political allegiances? Well, to give you a basic idea... This is a bit oversimplified, of course. Divisions are made up of many people, and they all have their own opinions. But the positions of each division's directors are clear as day, though. The first and second factories in particular have had a pretty fierce rivalry going on between them for years. But even still, I wouldn't have expected the first factory to do something flagrant enough to prompt a military inspection. Neither would I. All right, we're gonna do whatever it takes to get to the bottom of this. And when we tie this up all nice and neat for her, even my mother will have to admit she's grateful to us. Sounds like a plan. That's the spirit. Offhand, I'd say this falls under the scope of our field study, too. Thanks, everyone. Sounds like we're in for a ride. <laughs> anyway, let's take a look at the field study tasks Sharon gave us for today. Field study day two. Assigned tasks. Crying over lost milk. Milk is missing. Could you please help us find our beloved little kitty? Any would-be hero should come talk to me at my house next to Dining Bar F. Vanilla. Shots fired. Those of us at Reinford's two second factory have developed a new type of warble gun, and we'd like to have it tested. Speak with me in RF Arms if you fancy giving it a shot. Sandy. The Nordia Highway Monster. A ferocious monster has appeared on the Nordia Highway. The Nordia Provincial Army hereby requests its extermination. Monster. Hydra. Location, open area off of Nordia Highway. Once the monster is eliminated, please report to the soldiers in front of Marquis Rogner's residence. Yeah, I think we can handle these. It's still 8 a.m., so we have plenty of time to work our way through the list. And while we're doing that, we can ask the people we meet about how things stand between Reinford's divisions. Look alive, everyone. It's time to get to work. Right. Roger. Gotcha. All right, but we are going to save that for next episode. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one.